All right, let's solve this equation. The bases are the same, therefore the exponents have to be the same. So you can simply just eliminate these bases since it's both base three. Therefore, two x must equal two. You divide by two, and you get x equals one. So if the bases are the same, you can just simply eliminate them because the exponents have to be the same. Um, let's go to the next one. Okay, so in order for an exponential to equal 1, that means the exponent must be 0. Because I know 3 to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. So I know that n plus 1 must equal 0. So this part up here, the exponent must be 0 in order for this thing to equal 1. So I take away 1 on both sides. Therefore, n equals negative 1. All right, uh, one way to do this is to change it to a log. We could take the log of both sides, but it's probably easier to just change this to both be the same base, both sides of the equation. If the left side, left side is 6 to the power of 3k, and I can tell that 216 is 6 to the power of 3, then therefore 3k is equal to 3. I can eliminate the bases. And then divide by 3, so k equals 1. That's one way to do it. Not everybody's going to know 216 is 6 to the power of 3. If you wanted to, you could also you could also take the log of both sides. So the log of 6 to the 3k is equal to the log of 216. Remember, exponents can go out front, so 3k... Well, let's back up, back up, getting ahead of myself. So 3k times the log of 6 is equal to the log of 216. You can divide log 6, divide log 6. So 3k equals uh, the log, well, let's see. So the, let's just do the change of base formula. This is the log base 6 of 216. So the one on the bottom becomes my base. There's my base. And that's what's inside. You could simply just plug this into your calculator and you get 3. 3k equals 3. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So k equals 1. That, that's a much longer way to do this problem, but it would work. If you didn't know 216 was 6 to the power of 3, all right, let's try another one. Um, on this one, we're going to have to take the log of both sides, uh, change it to its log form. So log base 15 of 18 is equal to b take away 7. Um, we're going to need a calculator and... We're going to round this off to the nearest 10,000th. So I'm getting my calculator. Uh, log base 15 of 18 is about 1.067325767. And it adds 7 to both sides. And I get, let's see, let's round to the nearest 10 thousands, which is four decimal places. So that'll give me 8.0673. B is about. Okay. Next one. Okay, so I've got a log, and I'm trying to solve for what's inside. Just remember when you get to the end, uh, when you get to your solution on a log, you always have to check to make sure that when you plug your answer back in, it doesn't result in a negative inside of a log. Remember, negatives don't go in logs. Uh, let's see. Change it to its exponential form. 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 2x plus 4. So 25 equals 2x plus 4. Take away 4. 21 equals 2x, divide 2, x 
equals 10.5. Let's just leave it 21 halves. Let's just leave our, our answers as fractions. Simplify if you can, but if you can't, just leave it. Okay, I have two logs. They're being subtracted. I'm going to first bring this two up here. So I've got log base nine. Okay, so when you square a square root, it undoes the square. They're off opposite operations. So that's just plain x. Yesterday we talked about the principles of logs where you have subtraction in between two logs. You can combine it into one log with division. Now we can change it to our exponential form. 9 to the power of 0 equals x over 6x minus 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by 6x minus 1. 9 to the power of 0 is just 1, so I can ignore that. Let's see if I take away x on both sides. That gives me 5x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1. 5x equals 1. Divide 5. So x equals 1 fifth. Again, I'm, I'm looking always, whenever I deal with logs, if I plug 1 fifth in for x, does it result in a negative? See, 6 fifths, take away 1, that's positive. And the square root of a positive, if I put it in here, that's going to be positive. So I'm not putting any negatives inside of a log. We're good. So our answer is, our answer is 1 fifth. Right? Number 7. Uh, I have multiple logs. Uh, the left side I can combine uh, using the product rule. If I have two logs with the same base being added, I can combine it into one log where I, where I multiply what's inside. So I'm going to multiply this x throughout. Let's see, that's going to give us log of x squared minus x. And I'm just distributing here, distributing it to make it one log. Okay, so this equals in the middle says these two logs are exactly the same. They look different, but they're the same if they're equal. Therefore, the stuff inside has got to be equal. I can just get, eliminate the logs and say, hey, x squared minus x must equal 3x plus 12. This is quadratic. There's a few ways to solve quadratics. Probably the easiest way is factoring, but there's also quadratic formula in completing the square. Uh, factoring is usually the easiest. I try that first, and if that doesn't work, then we try the quadratic formula. Right? If factoring doesn't work. Either way, you're going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to take away 3x. I'm going to take away 12. I'm going to take away 3x. I'm going to take away 12. So that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Factoring is probably the easiest here. Uh, x take away 6, x plus 2 equals 0. So my two solutions, possible solutions, I, I don't know if these are going to work yet. I need to test them. My possible solutions are uh, negative 2 and 6. I'm a little nervous about that negative 2, though. But I'm going to check both. Let's see. If I put negative 2 in here, oh, well, that's problematic. I can't have a negative in a log. Therefore, I'm going to cross off the negative 2 as a possible solution because I can't put negatives into a log. Let's check 6. 
If I put a 6 in here, that's fine. 6 take away 1, that's 5, that's fine. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 12, that's fine. I'm checking to see if when I plug it in, it ends up being negative. If it's negative in a log, that's a problem. You can't put negatives in a log because exponentials never equal a negative. The exponent uh, on it, well, not the exponent, what an exponential equals will never be neg negative. Therefore, what you put into a log can never be negative. So this one only has one solution. It's, it's 6. All right, last one. All right, we have two logs. They are being subtracted, so I'm going to combine and make one log. All right, so if the logs are equal, I can just eliminate my logs because the stuff inside must also be equal. Multiply both sides by 7 minus x. So 10 equals 7x minus x squared. Again, it's quadratic. If it's something to the second power, that's quadratic. Easiest way to solve those is by factoring. If that doesn't work, then try the quadratic formula. Let's see. I'm going to add x squared to both sides. I'm going to take away 7x from both sides. So it equals 0. And then I'll try factoring. So my two solutions here, things that would make this equal 0, and this is possible solutions. I need to check to see if they actually work, are 5 and 2. Let me change that. Let's put 2 and 5, put them in order. 2 and 5 are my solutions, possible solutions. Let's go back and look. If I put uh, 2... Is 7 take away 2 negative? No, that's positive. Or if I put 2 in here for x, if I put 2 in, I'm checking to see, will that make it negative? In both situations, that's a positive number, so we're okay with 2 and 5. Let's see, if I put 5 in here, 7 take away 5, that's positive. And if I put 5 in over here, that's positive. We're good. We're just checking to see if it makes a negative. If it makes a negative inside your log, that's bad, and you just cross that solution off say that one doesn't work but in this case both both answers when you plug it back in you have a positive inside your log therefore both of them work there are problems where you have no answer where you plug it back in and it's a negative inside of a log and that's a problem it's okay to say there's no there's no solution on a problem uh, if that ends up being the case just write no solution